Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chame. Hey, I'm Adam Chame. And I'm Shoshana Chame, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by plants. plants. Today we bring to you episode 356, Fiber Fueled for Better Health with Dr. Will Balsowitz. In this episode of the Plan Trainers podcast, we talk with one of our fave gut doctors, Dr. B. He's back to talk about fiber in all its sexy glory. You will be astonished to hear some of the facts and figures he shares about gut health, overall health, and lack of fiber in North American diets. Do we talk about poop? Well, when don't we talk about poop, really? You'll have to share this out with others so they can learn about short-chain fatty acids, lectin, sugars, and f goals. Dr. B is a board-certified, award-winning gastroenterologist and the author of the plant-based gut health book, Fiber Fueled. He's a graduate of Georgetown University School of Medicine, was chief medical resident at Northwestern Memorial Hospital and chief gastroenterologist, fellow at the University of North Carolina Hospitals. He's authored more than 20 articles in the top American gastroenterology journals and has been featured in Shape, Women's Health, Men's Health, and on HuffPost. He lives in Charleston, South Carolina with his wife and two children. This is such a fun episode. He's such a great guy to have on the show. You're going to love it. Share it out because there's so much great information that so many people really need to hear. You have a huge collection of recipes, but you never make them. And you never even know what is for dinner. Things seem to kind of get out of control. You do your shopping. You hope that you're getting everything that you need. And then when four or five o'clock or six o'clock comes around, you're still scrambling to figure out what's for dinner. That used to be our life. And then I figured out the perfect system to make sure that everything was in order. I always had all the groceries that I needed and that I was making nutritious food for my family without the headaches of the scrambles. So we created the meal planning mastery so that I share all the tools that I use here in the Chain Plant Trainers Kitchen so that you have them to be able to create your own meal plans with your own preferences so that you are organized and life is just that much more simple. So you can find it on our website at planttrainers.com slash shop or click the link in the show notes at planttrainers.com. And now for a moment of gratitude. Actually, we're not going to share our moment right now because we do it at the beginning of today's show. So just take a moment to reflect on what you're grateful for today before continuing on with this episode. Fiber Man, Dr. B, welcome back to the Plan Trainers Podcast. Oh my gosh, it's such a treat to come back and on the show with you guys. I, I miss you and I look forward to the day that someday we're meeting up in the same city. Oh yeah, we should definitely do that. Some hugs when it's socially acceptable and all those other things. You were on the podcast back on 219. Wow. That was almost two years ago. That was over 100 episodes more. ago yeah. more yeah so that's super super crazy we talked about probiotics fermentation all of those good things and we are super excited for today's show but as you remember before we get into any of that we want to ask you if you have a moment of gratitude to share with us and the listeners i'm grateful for the time that i'm having with my kids right now during covid19 my son came up to me the other day and he said daddy you're my best friend and he's three years old and, you know, that kind of connection, I feel like there's been great bonding that we've had as a result of this virus. So the virus is horrible. It's crushing us all in some sort of unique way. But there is positive that's occurring. And I would rather focus on the positive than, like, have my life destroyed by all the negatives. And I, th- I think that's how we're going to get through this. And that's how we work together to find the positive moments and share them just like that. And to, to be your son's role model, superhero, fiber man, like it, it's just amazing, you know, that, that they have a guy like you to look up to. And it, it's really cool to find the positive pieces in this difficult time. So thanks for sharing that. What's your moment of gratitude? I want to hear it. <laughs> I mean, it's different every day, but right now, I mean, I'm just very happy to be here and spend time with the family as well. It's just, we spend a lot of time with our kids on a regular basis anyhow, but to be able to have that extra time and to see them in a little bit of a different way on certain things that they do that I don't normally get to see is really something that I'm grateful for at the moment. 
I have to say, Adam, I was really impressed by the way you reeled it in there because initially your facial expression, it looked like you had cabin fever for a moment. <laughs> and, and it looked a little bit like something out of the movie Misery. Like I was like, oh my gosh, what happened to my friends? <laughs> but you yeah. reeled it in, you got your head on straight. We've never been asked that back before. Although, yeah. so really? if, before we start this segment, we will record our moment of gratitude beforehand. But so everybody else will have heard what our moment is at the time of, you know, putting, putting all the pieces together of the podcast, but nobody's come back yeah, and asked us. So yeah. you, you got shocked. You got from yeah, him. I was shocked. <laughs> no, but you know what? I haven't been out of the house in such a long time other than my runs on a regular basis or the family walks. So it's, it's interesting. And it, I, I'm really looking forward to actually connecting with people in person at some point soon. And by the time this comes out, I don't know, that might even have changed, but it's just, it's life right now, right? I'm grateful yeah. the kids are taking even more responsibility for their own laundry. Mm. Hey. <laughs> There's <laughs> the, a win. The little things, right? <laughs> the little things. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So one thing that we keep seeing all over social media is all of these jokes about how people are just sitting at home eating. And by the time COVID's done, they're not even going to be able to leave the house because they're not going to fit through the door. Right. Have you, <laughs> have you seen, have you seen that meme? If people aren't being careful, you would think that this is an opportunity for people to be healthier because they're, they don't necessarily ha- aren't out as much, not as much drive through, not as much restaurants, but people are still doing that a bit. And some people are nervous and emotional eating and not really taking good care of themselves as well. But we right. do know that one thing that everybody should be putting into a diet now, whether it's for weight loss, for mental health, for good microbiome, what have you, is fiber. Yeah, no question. I, I feel like right now is not the time to be letting loose on your diet and allowing your health to drift away from you. Because, you know, I think we all need to be on guard about the possibility that every single one of us could potentially have to face this infection. I mean, you just don't know. It's so hard for us to track the infection, to know where it is, who has it, you know, all the asymptomatic carriers. And so because of that, I I feel like you need to prepare your body as if at some point you may have to put up this fight. And what we want is we want an optimized immune system which really starts with gut health. I mean, I have to tell you, like the principles that I teach in my book, Fiber Fueled, I'm personally doubling and tripling down on my own medicine because the immune system lives in the gut. 70% of the immune system lives in the gut. You cannot separate it from the gut microbiome. If you damage the gut bacteria, you will damage the immune system. If you lift up the gut bacteria, if you make them stronger by eating fiber, you will actually make your immune system stronger. And we have studies, some interesting studies looking at a high-fiber diet and respiratory viruses and how a high-fiber diet can actually be protective against respiratory viruses. So, you know, I feel like now is not the time to just, you know, throw caution to the wind. Now is the time actually to double down on the principles of health. And so the foods that they would be eating, I mean, fiber comes from plant-based foods, period, correct? Like you don't get it anywhere else, do you? It's so simple. It's fiber is uh, the plants have a monopoly. The plants have a monopoly. So fruits, vegetables, whole grain, seeds, and nuts. And what's unique, Adam, is that fiber isn't just fiber. You know, we act like, oh, it's count your grams of fiber. Like uh, the the fiber in your Cheerios is the same as the fiber in in a black bean. And it's simply not true. There are millions, potentially billions of types of fiber that exist in nature. Every plant has its own unique types of fiber. But here's the cool thing. Fiber is food for the microbiome. This is what they eat. This is what they thrive on. And every plant that you eat will feed specific populations of bacteria and allow them to thrive, grow stronger, and then exert their healing effects on your body. And so when people say, like, where do you get your protein from? We're always worried about the protein. That's such a a mistake because aren't most North Americans missing fiber in their diet? Like, isn't that what's causing people not to be healthier because they don't get the fiber that they should be getting? Yeah. You, you sound like someone who could have written my book right now (laughs) because uh, seriously, because that, that's like literally a, a, almost a, almost a a verbatim quote out of my book. And I don't want people to accuse me of stealing it from you. Okay. May the record (laughs) reflect, but the, you know, where do you get your protein from is such a silly question. 
Most of us are getting twice as much protein as we actually need. Even vegans are getting 70% more protein than they actually need in most cases. It kind of depends on like what sort of physical activity you're doing, but most of us are getting way more than what we actually need. And the counterpoint, like you said, is the fiber where we live you know, in North America. Let's just homogenize Canada and the United States because, frankly, we eat pretty darn similar. You know, and and if you look, 97 percent of us are not even getting the minimal daily standard of fiber. And that's problematic because I'm telling you how how powerful this is for healing our gut, for healing our immune system, our metabolism, our hormone levels, our mind, our brain, our mood. All those things connected back to our gut and to this connection with fiber. And we're pulling the plug on the gut. We're not giving it the energy and the power that it needs to thrive and to be able to do its job. So you talked about not all fibrous foods being equal. What different types of fiber is important for us to know about? Well, um, you know, to keep things simple, we have broken it into two main types, soluble and insoluble fiber. Now, insoluble fiber is the kind that's the roughage. It's the grit. All right. If you put it into a glass of water and stir, you're going to be stirring for a long time because it's never going to dissolve. And insoluble fiber kind of works the way that we think of when we think of our grandma drinking the orange drink. Insoluble fiber goes in the mouth and it works its way through all 20 to 25 feet of intestine and then it launches out the other end like a torpedo. All right. That's insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is a totally different story, unlike anything that you have ever been taught before. It goes through the small intestine. And it reaches the the colon untouched. It's the same as it was when it went in. But soluble fiber is food for the microbes. So it gets down to the colon. And this is where most of your microbiome lives. And your microbes get into a feeding frenzy. And they consume the fiber. The fiber doesn't just pass through. The fiber actually gets consumed, chewed up by these microbes. And they multiply and they grow and they get stronger. They are, guys, these microbes are as alive as you and I. They're as alive as you and I, and they need energy just like we do. What happens to us if we don't eat? We starve. We get weaker. Our muscles waste away, and then we die. The same thing happens to your microbes if you don't feed them the fiber that they're starving for. But when you feed them, just like us, you know, you eat a good, wholesome meal. You nourish your body with a plant-based meal, and your body grows stronger, and then you're capable of going out and doing the kind of runs that Adam likes to do. You know, where you're out there. I mean, how many miles did you run yesterday, Adam? Today, it was a short one. Today, it was only 5K, so three miles. Nice and a short. A mere 5K. Yeah, a nice mere 5K. <laughs> yeah. He was home in like so. 35 seconds. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. So, but, but you know, the, the bottom line is, you, you know this, that if you didn't eat for a week, and you try and run that 5K, that's going to actually be really hard for you to do because your body is not nourished and you're not physically strong. And so we need to feed these microbes and what they eat is fiber. And here's the beautiful thing. And I, I don't remember if we talked about this the first time I was on the show, but these, these microbes consume the fiber and then they actually pay us back. They don't just get stronger. They actually pay us back in spades because they release what are called short chain fatty acids and short chain fatty acids have healing effects everywhere that they go. So like, for example, right there in the colon, they heal leaky gut. They, they reverse dysbiosis. They make the gut strong again. But they also get into the bloodstream. They affect the immune system, optimize the immune system. They go all the way to the heart, prevent atherosclerosis. They optimize insulin sensitivity, very relevant to people with diabetes. They cross the blood-brain barrier. They, they affect our ability to focus. They affect our mood. They actually have been shown to reverse Alzheimer's disease. So what we're talking about is something that is incredibly powerful from a healing perspective. And there's only one way to get them. You can't get short-chain fatty acids from eating ice cream or from eating meat or eggs. All right. You can only get it from one place, and that is plants, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, seeds, and nuts. And every single type of plants has in its own way its own contribution to your health. And when we study this and we look at the health of the microbiome, what we find is that very clearly, the number one predictor of a healthy gut microbiome is the diversity of plants in your diet. So we need diversity of plants. We don't need just grams of fiber. We need diversity of plants. That's what I care about. 
you need everything else that's coming along with it. And, you know, very often we'll get asked, well, what is wrong with dairy if it has these good things for you? What is wrong with eggs if it has these good things for you? And before I even talk about what's wrong with it, I'm like, what else is it coming with that's hurting you? But you don't see that in the plant world, especially if you're eating an organic diet, right? This is, oh my gosh, this is such an important concept. Just wanted to pop in here and remind you about our Easy Recipes for Busy Parents e-cookbook, where we help you to really get meals done for a whole week. Make sure that we overlap ingredients so that you don't have to go out buying a crazy amount of ingredients that you're never gonna use again. And the recipes are pretty simple and children aren't scared of them when they're trying them out for the first time. So if you wanna get that, you could click the link in the show notes or pop over to planttrainers.com shop and check out our easy recipe for Busy Parents Cookbook. And now back to the show. This is such an important concept because people need to see the forest through the trees. What is the big picture? What actually happens when you eat this food? So I actually had someone message me this morning and they said, I'm worried about your diet plan because of the lectins. I'm worried about the lectins. And I said to him, I go, look, I said, I understand there's another doctor out there. Like there's one doctor. Who will not be named. <laughs> right. A lone wolf who is marching around on the plains and saying, you need to go lectin free. We eat six pounds in the United States, six pounds, like less than three kilograms of beans per year. We're eating less than we did 50 years ago. And we eat 220 pounds, 100 kilos of meat in the United States. And we think the beans are the problem. We think that's the problem. We eat 100 kilos of meat and and less than three kilos of beans. And we think that's the problem. To your point, Shoshana, what happens when, when real human beings actually eat the food? And this is all laid out very clearly in my book. People live longer. They have less heart disease. They have less cancer. I just listed the top two killers right there, right? People eating real beans live longer with less heart disease and less cancer. They're not dying from lectin overdose. Is there any disease, and let's be fair for a minute, is there any disease that you could think of that a more fibrous plant-fed diet cannot help with? Um, all right, let's, let, let, let's be fair and say that you know any food to excess can hurt you, including a plant, right? So if I construct a diet where I say, I'm going to go on the kale-only diet. Kale yeah, is the healthiest. stones in a couple of weeks, right? <laughs> oh, I'll be, uh, oh, I'll be screaming and yelling, you know? No mas. <laughs> so, you know, any food taken to excess can potentially harm us. So, and this that's kind of part of why I like the balance of saying diversity of plants Because if you're not overemphasizing one food, you're going to get a little bit of everything. And that's actually just going to play to the strengths of all the foods without exposing you to any of the negatives. You gave a good explanation of the two different types of fiber, but I'm still thinking there's somebody that's listening that's saying, oh, it's okay. I'll just use that powder to get my fiber in every day and that'll help clean me out because that's what fiber does. So to that person... How do you respond right now again to clarify what the role of this soluble fiber might be? All right, I'm, I'm talking to this person directly right now. I'm no longer I'm no longer yeah, acknowledging you just the plant trainers. In your chair, you got yeah. serious. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm very serious, and I'm no longer talking to the plant trainers. May the record reflect. Jimmy Bo, I want to talk to you for a minute. This this idea that you can take a fiber supplement and heal your gut is just not going to cut it. And here's the reason why. Your gut thrives on diversity of fiber, diversity of fiber. When you take a fiber supplement, you are taking one type of fiber that has been isolated from the plant, extracted from the plant. And while that could potentially make some minor changes in your gut microbiome, it's not going to lead to the type of dramatic life-changing changes that we're looking for where you are absolutely thriving. You can't go from a C- minus gut to an A- plus with the fiber supplement. You just can't. But if you're willing to change your diet, if you're willing to bring in plant-based diversity, I'm going to get you all the way to an A, maybe even an A plus. And then if you want to sprinkle a little bit of that fiber in there, I don't have a problem with it because you're already rocking an A, maybe even an A plus. All right, Jimmy Bo. Love it. Go get him, buddy. (laughs) That's great. That's great. I'm back. How important is drinking of water when you're getting a diverse fiber diet? Well, I think, okay, so drinking water is important, period. 
We don't do enough of it. It blows my mind that we actually spend a substantial amount of money. Like I don't know how many dollars the average person spends on soft drinks per year, but it's a lot. Mm. You know, and you could get water for free. And it's 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 quite remarkable that, you know, you could probably send yourself on a beautiful vacation with the money that you save by simply drinking the healthiest beverage that exists on the planet and trading in the sugary beverage, you know? So water is important for fiber, but you know, the important thing um, is when you're adding in fiber, and I think you're kind of alluding to this a little bit, Shoshana, when you're adding in fiber, you don't want to be hyper aggressive, right? If you're not someone who's been eating a lot of fiber, eating a lot of plants, this is not about saying, Hey, I just heard Dr. B on the plant trainers. I'm going vegan today. I actually want you to ease your body into it because the last thing that I want is for you to do a cannonball into the pool and realize that the pool, you weren't ready for that cannonball. And so you don't ever want to swim again, right? I want you to ease your body into it. And so this is about moving the needle. And I'll tell you, like, I don't know about you guys. I'd be curious to hear, but for me on my, on my plant-based journey, it was never a single day where I changed my life. It, there was the single day where I took my first step, like a baby taking his first step. But then it was me walking this path that ultimately led me to a 100 whole food plant based diet. But along that path, it took time. It took me actually years to get there. I did. I did it overnight. For, for me, it was, well, no. For me, it was like I, I made the decision and I was all in. But I could tell you that along the way, I went through phases of introducing new foods that I hadn't eaten before, and I would get really bloated and I would get really gassy. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about. And then most people would say, I'm done. I don't want this bloating and gassy because this fiber is doing that to me. And so you're saying to ease into it, which I should have probably done with certain foods. You, this is such an important topic, okay? This, and this is actually probably the most important chapter in my entire book. This is the chapter that Garth Davis likes the most, which is about food sensitivity, how to eat a plant-based diet when you have a sensitive gut. Because it's the person who has a damaged gut that needs this the most, okay? And you see all these, um, you know, sort of like vegan influencers who quit veganism citing their gut health issues. And they, Adam, basically what they're talking about is what you're describing. Right. So what's actually happening? What's happening is that you rely on your gut microbiome to process and di digest your plant foods, okay? We have outsourced it to our microbiome. Now, your microbiome is completely adaptable. But it's adaptable in the same way that your muscle is adaptable, right? So if you train for a marathon, you don't wake up and run a marathon. You train and you gear up and there is a ramp where you are going from 5K to 7K to 10K and you're working your way up as you prepare for this marathon. You got to train your muscle when it comes to exercise. The same is true with your gut. You have to train your gut, treat your gut like it is a muscle, all right? So if you have not been eating this food, that's effectively the same as waking up and saying, I'm going to the gym for the first time. When you go to the gym for the first time, you don't try to blast your body. You could hurt yourself. You got to be willing to start low. You reach for the five pounds, 2.5 pounds, you know, the lower weights. You start low and you ease your body into it and you recognize that you can turn yourself into that physical specimen that you want to be. You can get yourself in great physical shape, but there's a process that exists to get yourself there. And along that path, it may not, there's going to be some physical discomfort that comes with it. You know, in the same way that when you go to the gym, it's like, gosh, I'm sore. I don't really love that. I, I think, I think you could kind of relate it to anything in life, really like going from being a uh a PC user to a Mac user too, right? The first time you open your MacBook and you go to use it, you want to throw it against the wall because you don't know what you're doing and you keep making mistakes. So, you know, that, that makes sense with anything. We've got to learn to crawl before we walk, right? We've got to learn to take steps before we run. So, so that's definitely it. And, and that does happen so often. People will say to us, yeah, I made a bean salad. Okay, how much did you eat? Well, I ate the whole can, and no one, no wonder you're calling me complaining the next day, right? Like exactly. you, you've got you've got to go one little step at a time, and I think that once you get there, there's no there's no coming back to it. You feel you feel great. There's you know you you save time in the washroom. You're in and out, right? Like there's all these 
amazing things that happen with your mental health, with your clarity, with your ability to to exercise, digestion. How fast do you see people talking about digestion recovering from things like acid reflux or GERD when they can't digest foods, but when they take out all those other things, all of a sudden they, they start to feel better? Well, you can you can address issues like that potentially very quickly, all right? And specifically when you can be very targeted in your approach. But what's interesting is with GERD is we have all these treatments that like reduce stomach acid, right? Fiber does not reduce stomach acid, yet we have multiple studies to suggest that fiber actually pr- protects us from acid reflux. And the reason why is because it has to do with motility and it has to do with the gut microbiome. And when you properly feed the gut microbiome, the motility is restored, and all of a sudden you stop having the acid reflux issue. So we have studies with fiber, and we have studies with a basically almost 100% plant-based Mediterranean diet that show benefit for acid reflux. What's interesting is that in my book, I actually created a four-week plan. Now, when I went into building out the book, you know, it would have been so much easier for me to do like a 10-day thing and call it a detox. It would have been so much easier. Just have like 25 recipes, boom, get out, we're done, right? But I kept seeing in study after study after study, four weeks, four weeks kept popping up as like the magic number when it comes to changing the gut. And so because of that, that's why I had to make my meal plan a four, it's a four week plan. It's a four week plan designed for the person who's listening to our show right now and says, you know what? I want to heal my gut, but I'm not sure where to start or how to do it. Follow the plan. Follow the plan. It's actually designed to be incremental and to ramp you up over time in the way that you and I are talking about right now. And I want to get more into that in a question in, in a couple of minutes and ask you some more questions about that. But I have sugar on the mind and I know that there's a lot of debate out there where, you know, the plant based world will say, eat plant based, it'll help, and the rest of the world will say, No, 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 sugar is the problem. So if you're going to, you know, say for someone who does eat a lot of fiber a lot of different types of fiber in their diet already, or for somebody who's saying, I need to make a change, but I'm going to cut the sugar, I'm not going to add in the fiber. What do you have to say about that and how that processed sugar is actually affecting the body? So I don't like when we process foods and turn them into some perverted version of its original form, right? Anytime we process our food, we run the risk that we are, over the course of time, reducing the the nutritious value in the food to the point that at some at some moment you cross the line and it actually starts turning into what could be a poison, right? That could actually be causing harm instead of good. So when it comes to sugar, I think it's an interesting topic because when you take the sugar out of the plant, it becomes a radically different thing than when it's a whole plant that contains sugar. I have zero fear of whole plant foods, including fruit. I actually list fruit as one of the top categories of food that I see as an opportunity to get more of. Do people who eat more fruit gain weight because of the sugar? No, they lose weight. Do people who eat more fruit get diabetes and spike their blood sugar? No, actually, they have better blood sugar control. And the reason why is because the food has already been packaged in a way that nature intended it. That includes the fiber. But if you take the apple which is incredibly healthy for you, and you juice the apple and you remove the fiber, you are not ending up with the same product that nature intended you to have. Now it's a sugar beverage. And so I just see them as as very different things. It's kind of like, you know, uh, categorically vilifying carbs. That makes zero sense to me. Fiber is a carb. Are you telling me that fiber is bad for you? Because if you are, that's some quack science. And I know there's some people who say that. That is some quack science science. And that's why those are lone wolves that are out there howling at the moon and all the other scientific world is going, whoa, dude, whoa, you're weird, man. You're weird. Based on your book, what would you say are the top five actual foods that people should be consuming as often as possible? All right. Let me, let me go beyond five if that's okay. Do yeah, I have permission? Do it. Okay. There's actually a chapter that I call the fiber fueled foods. And the key is, again, just to set the stage, diversity is the most important thing, right? I want you to have as many friends as possible, but it's okay to make the superfoods your best friends. 
it's okay. You have my permission to have best friends that you eat every single day. So I define them at, by the acronym F goals, F for fiber, F goals, F stands for fruit and fermented. I actually think a little bit of fermented food every day is a great thing. G is for greens and grains. Greens are all nutrient, zero calorie. If you're trying to lose weight, get more of those. Grains, foundational food for the microbiome. O is for omega-3 super seeds, chia, flax, hemp. A is for aromatics like garlic, onions, shallots, leeks. L is for legumes. Again, foundational foods. You get rid of whole grains, you get rid of legumes, you are destroying your gut microbiome. And then S was really hard for me because I had multiple multiple categories that begin with S that I wanted to include. So I included one, which is my favorite one, but then I gave two bonuses. The two bonuses are shrooms, shrooms, which by the way are not plants. So we're on the plant paint, the plant trainer podcast, and I'm talking about something that's not even a plant. And seaweed. Seaweed, they are plants and they're way underrated. They have some unique properties and they have unique types of fiber that we miss out on if you don't eat seaweed because they're they're different. But the S that I actually used in the book, it's it's like it caught my heart. Like I'm obsessed with it. It's sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is the phytochemical that you will find in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts. This is the most powerful cancer crushing phytochemical I have ever come across. This is the cancer fighter. And what's really cool and exciting, you guys may already know this. What's really cool and exciting is that broccoli sprouts have up to a hundred times more sulforaphane than mature adult broccoli. So I grow my own sprouts. And in the book, I tell you how to grow your own sprouts as well. And it's incredibly easy to do. And it's kind of fun to do with your kids, to be honest. I kind of want to jump on that train. Actually, yesterday, somebody DM'd us at Plant Trainers on Instagram and was like, "Have you? do you know, guys know about broccoli sprouts? They've got more of all this great stuff than, than adult broccoli and all of that. So, yeah. So I've been thinking about getting on that. We've started a little herb garden. So it's definitely... Once it's, it's above yeah. ab- above one degree here, <laughs> we can we can get into that. <laughs> well, the cool and the cool thing is with the with the sprouts is that you don't even need dirt. Oh, that's it's even literally, better. It's literally a mason jar and seeds, and that's pretty much it. That's all you need, and you just do it right in your kitchen, and it takes about five days. The the, the most important thing is that I found because I've messed this up so many times is you just have to have really good seeds. That's all. So you got to order from a place that's got legitimate seeds. If you have bad seeds, you will keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. And you'll be so angry because, you know, Dr. B made it sound so easy. So it is easy. On the seeds. It, it, Top shelf yeah, seeds. You just, well, you just need a good, good company that has quality seeds. That's all. Very cool. Got it. Got it. So I love that. So it's goals. F, F goals. <laughs> like a snake. <laughs> like a snake. Yeah. yeah. I love that. And I think that's going to give people a lot of direction and a lot of action that they can take. Hey, am I getting my aromatics every day? Hey, did I get something cruciferous? And today it's really tangible for them to to take action on, especially while they're hopefully doing some good grocery shopping, getting as much as they can in and then being able to reap the benefits from that. Yeah. Super cool. It's um, it's a great book. There's a lot of great tips in there and a lot of recipes I saw too. And I love that you asked people to rank with plant points. I thought that was really cool. That's a fun way for people to track. How'd you come up with plant points? Oh man. All right. I So first of all, I wanted to gamify the idea of going plant-based. And it's the, it made sense to me because my my number one golden rule, like I'm against the lists. I'm against all the rules and the macros and the weighing your food. I have one rule, diversity of plants. So I wanted to reward people who bring more diversity of plants into their diet. And so that's how I wanted to gamify it. But then I thought back to when I was a GI fellow and we used to have this joke. It was a running joke for several for several years. I mean, we, we really kind of took it too far about creating a a gastroenterology practice called rock and roll gastro and rock and roll gastro is like, I'm not wearing scrubs. I'm wearing, you know, like rock and roll outfit, you know, shades, like total rock star. So I wanted to bring that element of rock and roll gastro into my book somehow. And this is where I did it. When you get, when you get plant points, 
you start ramping up in your plant points, you can go from a, like a rock rookie up to a rock star, up to all the way, like rock legends, like Paul McCartney. And gosh, there's so many. I mean, I, name your favorite rock star. And that's who I'm talking about. I think it's super fun. It adds a really cool element to the book. And for those listening, the book is called Fiber Fueled, the plant-based gut health program for losing weight, restoring your health, and optimizing your microbiome. It's a rock star book. Thanks so much for putting it together. And by the time this episode drops, your book will be available. So where can people go to connect with you or grab their book? All right. So the book is available through all your typical outlets, you know, for example, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. But here's what I honestly believe with the COVID-19 crisis. I really want to encourage people to go to your local bookstore when possible. Support your local bookstore. That way, when COVID-19 crisis is over and it's a rainy day and you want to have a cup of coffee and just flip through some books, you're able to actually do that. You don't have to order something off of Amazon and sit at home. So support your local bookstore. Come find me at theplantfedgut.com. That's my website, theplantfedgut.com. I have um, tons of resources. Literally all 600 references from my book are available for free. You don't even have to buy the book. I'll give you the references. All right. I believe in complete transparency. I got nothing to hide. Um, you can find me on Instagram as the Gut Health MD. And, you know, the last thing I just want to say real quick, if I hope you don't mind, is that I feel like we're living in this era of misinformation. COVID-19 has really accentuated that, like really made it even more apparent how much misinformation is out there. And we all have uh, a responsibility to identify legitimate information and then bring it forward and celebrate it. That's how we combat misinformation. And so for the people listening at home, if you have enjoyed this podcast and you believe in what we're talking about, I want you to go and tell your friends, share it, put it on, you know, put it on your social media, on your stories or on a post. And the same goes for my book. If you read my book and you believe in what I'm saying, which, you know, there's 600 references to back up what I'm saying. If you believe in it, tell your friends, tell your friends, because knowledge is power. And when you go and you share good information with another person, you are, you are healing them in the same way that a doctor would. Love it. That's a very important message. And thank you so much for not only that message, but the whole entire podcast. We really appreciate you. We're so happy that you're here with us today. And we know that our listeners have learned a bunch and that they'll have plenty to share with their ones that they love. Always great to connect with you guys. Appreciate y'all. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you every time we get a five-star rating or review on itunes from one of our fans it really helps other people find us just like you did thanks so much to our patrons to become a patron visit us at patreon.com slash plant chainers even supporting us with one dollar really makes a difference in the quality of the show and don't forget to connect with us on instagram and twitter our handle is at plant trainers like plant trainers on facebook join our newsletter and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes, a list of our services, and of course, our latest podcast. We encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness. So we hope we've inspired you today. Join us again next time and and have have a a healthy healthy day. day. Or is that too corny? It's a little cheesy.